everybody. Welcome to 2ZQ Hot Takes, where we discuss issues both big and small. I am your host, the very handsome Tim Kirk, and this time I'll be talking about what are the odds. Well, to start, for the LGBTQ plus population, they're mostly pretty rough. Glad posted a tweet from the National Archive of Criminal Justice Data into University Consortium for Political and Social Research that said, Gun violence is an LGBTQ issue. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, and trans people are more than two times as likely to be victims of gun violence than their straight and cisgender peers, a number impacted by intimate partner violence, IPV, and anti LGBTQIA plus bias. According to information provided by the Trevor Project, suicide is the second leading cause of death among young people aged 10 to 24. Hedegaard, Curtin, and Warner in 2018 provided that information. And lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and questioning youth are at significantly increased risk. LGBTQ youth are more than four times as likely to attempt suicide than their peers. The Trevor Project estimates that more than 1.8 million LGBTQ youth aged 13 to 24 seriously consider suicide each year in the U.S. and at least one attempts suicide every 45 seconds. The Trevor Project's 2022 National Survey on LGBTQ Youth Mental Health found that 45% of LGBTQ youth seriously considered attempting suicide in the past year, including more than half of transgender and non-binary youth. According to an article from EdSource, titled Young, Gay, and Living on the Street, LGBT youth face increased odds of homelessness. LGBT young people ages 13 to 25 are 120 percent more likely to become homeless than their straight peers, according to a national survey. One measure of how many are affected comes from Lyric. Of the 600 mostly LGBT young people enrolled in Lyrics programs in San Francisco, 56% are homeless or have unstable housing situations and all are low income. In California, the number of homeless children in K-12 schools overall has jumped 20% from 2014, 2015, to 2016, 2017, according to data collected by the California Department of Education. Based on questionnaires filed by their families, more than 200,000 young people were living on the streets, in motels, in cars, in shelters, or crowded into apartments with other families due to financial hardship. Hey... According to a 2012 study by the True Colors Fund, Pallet Fund, and Williams Institute at UCLA, 46% of LGBT youth who are homeless or at risk of becoming homeless left home because of family rejection due to their sexual orientation or gender identity. 43% were forced out by their parents because of their sexual orientation or gender identity. 32% left because of physical, emotional, or sexual abuse at home, and 17% aged out of their foster system. Neglect, substance abuse, mental illness, and lack of affordable housing were among the reasons LGBT young people became homeless. 
nationwide, 25% of LGBT teens are thrown out of their homes at some point after coming out to their parents, according to a 2015 True Colors Fund survey of 138 agencies that provide services to LGBT homeless young people. Although that's less common in urban gay-friendly areas like San Francisco and Los Angeles, it still happens. According to an article from heart.org, Gay men and bisexual women have higher odds for high blood pressure. Gay men and bisexual women have higher rates of high blood pressure than their heterosexual counterparts, according to new research. The study analyzed self-reported data from 424,255 participants, including 1.8% who were gay or lesbian and 2.3% who were bisexual. After adjusting for demographics, insurance, body mass index, and smoking status, researchers found that gay men were 24% more likely and bisexual women were 17% more likely to have high blood pressure compared to their heterosexual peers. According to McKinsey, Academic estimates have found that 5.1% of U.S. women identify as LGBTQ+, as do 3.9% of U.S. men. Their representation in corporate America, however, is much lower than these levels. LGBTQ plus women are underrepresented at every stage of the management pipeline, considerably worse than LGBTQ plus men's representation. LGBTQ plus women by management level and percents, U.S. average LGBTQ plus women 5.1%. They're represented at 2.3% of entry level. 1.6 manager, 1.2 senior manager director, 0.7 vice president, and 0.6 senior vice president and C-suite. U.S. average LGBTQ plus men at 3.9%. Represented at 3.1% at entry level, 2.8% manager, 3% Senior Manager Director, 1.9% Vice President, and surprisingly, 2.9% Senior Vice President and C-Suite. The representation of LGBTQ plus women starts to drop off beginning with the first promotion to the manager level, while LGBTQ plus women make up 2.3% of entry-level employees they comprise only 1.6% of managers and even smaller shares of more senior roles. The underrepresentation increases the likelihood that LGBTQ plus women will feel isolated at work. With so few others like them, they are more likely to represent their entire group while they are the only one like themselves in meetings or events. The research shows that stress increases when a person experiences onlyness or being the only one on a team in a meeting with their given gender identity, sexual orientation, or race. Employees who face onlyness across multiple dimensions face even more pressure to perform. For LGBTQ plus women who are workplace minorities in both gender and sexual orientation, the only experience is common and particularly challenging in corporate environments. LGBTQ plus women are twice as likely as women overall to report being an only, and they're seven times more likely to say so than straight white men. LGBTQ plus women of color are eight times more likely than straight men to report onlyness. And there's a graph that says LGBTQ plus women especially women of color, are dramatically more likely to experience being an only. 
Now, it's broken down into three segments. Gender, race or ethnicity, and orientation. The onlyness from straight white men is 8% for gender, race or ethnicity, and orientation. For men, overall, it's 18%. For women, it's 29%. For LGBTQ plus women, it's 58%. And for LGBTQ plus women of color, it is 66%. LGBTQ plus women face more inappropriate comments and sexual harassment at work. Experience at work by sexual orientation in percentage. Those who have experienced microaggressions... Straight men, 58%. Experienced any form of sexual harassment, 18%. Heard sexist comments or jokes about people of your gender, 10%. Had obscene or sexually explicit comments directed at you, 4%. Being pressured to play along or participate in sexual discussions, humor, or actions, 5%. For LGBTQ plus men, 76% experience microaggressions. 73% of straight women experience microaggressions. Lesbian women, 78%. LGBTQ plus women overall, 82%. And bisexual women, 86%. Sexual harassment for LGBTQ plus men, 30%. 41% for straight women. 53% for lesbian women. LGBTQ plus women overall, 58%, and bisexual women, 62%. Heard sexist comments or jokes about people of your gender, 19% for LGBTQ plus men, which I think is an underrepresentation. 33% for straight women, 48% for lesbian women. 50% for LGBTQ plus women overall and 53% for bisexual women. Had obscene or sexually explicit comments directed at you, 10% of LGBTQ plus men, I find that difficult to believe, 15% for straight women, 18% for lesbian women, LGBTQ plus women overall, 22%. And bisexual women at 26%. Again, I have a hard time accepting this. Being pressured to play along or participate in sexual discussion, humor, or actions. LGBTQ plus men, 11. Straight women, 11. Lesbian women, 17. LGBTQ plus women overall, 21. And bisexual women, 24%. I think this is an underrepresentation just based on my own personal experience for being out at work for well over 30 years. It ain't easy being queer, folks. It just is not. Of violent hate crimes, 66.8% against LGBT victims were simple assaults compared to 69.8% against non-LGBT victims. Among serious violent crimes, 22.9% against LGBT victims were robberies compared to 5.2% against non-LGBTQ victims. And 4.5% against LGBT victims were aggravated assaults compared to 29% against non-LGBT victims. Overall, 84.7% of LGBT hate crime victims compared to 25% of non-LGBT hate crime victims identified gender or sexuality as the bias motivation. 14.3% of LGBT hate crime victims identified biases other than gender or sexuality as the motivation for the hate crime. Jesus, man. LGBT victims were more often below age 35, well known to the assailant with a white offender and less often a stranger to the assailant. Overall, only about 1 in 10 LGBTQ victims 
sought help from victim service agencies. Uh, okay. This is a rough one. Young or old, male or female, whatever race you are, your identity puts you at serious risk for your own personal health, whether it's self-destructive or neglectful or risk of violence. From the National Library of Medicine, Overweight and Obesity Among Sexual Minority Adults in the United States. The abstract says, There is evidence that sexual minority populations have a potentially heightened risk of poor health outcomes due in part to the discrimination they may face. In the present study, they examined whether overweightness and obesity vary by sexual minority subgroup using a large nationally representative sample. Data were drawn from 2014 to 2017 behavioral risk factor surveillance system surveys. They grouped participants according to sexual identity, straight, lesbian, or gay, bisexual, and other don't know and not sure. The propensity score matching technique was used to address covariate imbalance among sexual identity groups. In addition, subgroup analyses were performed for both males and females. Compared to straight adults, lesbian females had significantly higher odds of being overweight, whereas gay males had significantly lower odds. Similarly, lesbians were more likely to be obese, whereas gay men had significantly lower odds of obesity when compared to straight adults. Bisexual females had significantly higher odds of being overweight and obese, whereas bisexual males showed no significant difference. Their results strengthened previous findings and furthered highlights needed for research by sexual minority subgroup. And this is astounding to me considering the number of bears that are out there and guys who do not mind enjoying a steak and a few extra drinks and go to bars that cater to bears. The subculture seems to be quite strong and is represented in many ways. And uh, we see this on a daily basis in gay communities. From the Truth Initiative... The LGBT community is disproportionately impacted by tobacco. LGB female youth aged 14 to 17 years are three times more likely to use cigarettes and cigars as straight females in the past month. They are two times more likely to use e-cigarettes as straight females in the past month. LGBT adults are two times as likely to use e-cigarettes and little cigars. 20.5% of LGBT adults, 34.9% of transgender adults, as opposed to 15.3% of straight adults smoke cigarettes. Can you believe this? One tobacco manufacturer's marketing strategy called Project Scum targeted gay men and homeless individuals. They're out to get us. So folks, not only do we have to be on the lookout and be very careful of ourselves and our actions still to prevent violence or harassment or just being humiliated we also have to take a cold, hard, sober look at the way we live our lives. As I've previously mentioned in other podcasts, gay men are 10 times more likely to use meth than straight men and 12 times more likely to use heroin. Heroin. Now, considering the recent 
string of attacks on gay men and the new information documented, which has not been released in statistical form, there are police reports stating that not only is fentanyl being put into cocaine, but lidocaine is being used to numb people. And there are other drugs that are equally deadly being used and mixed in with recreational drugs that gay men are using, thinking that there are no consequences. We have to wake up. If you want to live a life, you want to live long, you want to be healthy, you got to take steps and look out for people. People need help, whether they know it or not. Be there. Be an ally. Support people. Stand together and act as one. Thanks for listening. See you next time. And as the kitties say, peace out.